Game figures, an important topic and uh, one that we will talk about a lot here and then uh, we will practice a lot in lab, just to let you know. So uh, a couple things to say before I start taking the notes and I do want you to write this down. Please write down on this page that in lecture and on homework and on exams, you can always keep three sig figs for all of your answers. And in any problem that you can write on an exam that where it does the number in the learning management system for you, you can always keep all of the digits on your calculator and get the right answer. So please write that down. That'll be useful to know in the future. Now, um, when we talk about significant figures, all measured quantities cannot be completely accurate. And that accuracy uh, depends on the uh, instrument that you use. And we're going to talk a lot about those instruments. And we have a simple example. So um, the question is, what is the mass of this avocado? And on this scale, mass is 106.1 grams. And, and just let me say, this is the same avocado. So, you know. And then on this scale, it's mass equals 106.19 grams. And so, first thing I would say is that this scale here on the right, all things being equal, meaning they're calibrated correctly, and we, don't, we won't go into that, but this scale is more accurate. Uh, so it just has more digits and instruments tell you how accurate they can be based on how many digits they display. So uh, these scales, this one on the left here, uh, holds three kilograms. So while it is not as accurate, it does hold more. This one here is the same one I've asked you to buy uh, or provided uh, uh, for the lab. So. Uh, this one only holds 220 grams. So, and that's often one of the trade-offs for accuracy is uh, it can be more accurate, but it can hold less. Now, um, as far as significant figures go, the way that scales and the way that all measurements go is that you report all of the digits that you know. So I'm gonna write report all known digits. or figures plus the last digit has error or uncertainty. Plus the last digit, which in this case will be the one, actually we'll use red there. The last digit has error, error or uncertainty. Okay, so, and uh, what we will say is that um, on this one, we have, uh, so this digit is the last digit. Has error, error or uncertainty. And that's the common practice in all of science. Report all the digits that you know and one more digit where there's error or uncertainty. And another way of saying that is we have some information about it, but not enough to know it 100%, okay? And so uh, here, what we would say is that this number has five significant figures. or five sig figs, four of which we know, one of which is uncertain or has error. And this number here has four sig figs. And the more sig figs something has, the more accurate it is. 
And now let's talk about um, how to tell just by looking at a number whether it's significant or not. Uh, so when a value is reported correctly using sig figs, we'll be, we'll be able to, be, to figure out how accurately a number is uh, as known and what its uncertainty or error is. So rules for significant figures, all non-zero digits are significant. In this example, they're all non-zero digits, there are no zeros. And there are four sig figs. Number two, leading zeros are not significant, they are placeholders. And looking at the number of leaders here, I'm gonna tell you there are three sig figs and that whenever you have a number and if you want to put it in uh, to tell exactly and easily how many sig figs there are put it in scientific notation in scientific notation placeholder zeros disappear In scientific notation, placeholder zeros disappear. Hmm. Zeros disappear. I did just recently see that zeros can be spelled with an E, Z E R O E S, or without the E. Either one is cor considered correct. I don't know why I always spell it with an E. Hopefully I'm correct. All right, so in scientific notation, this would be 7.51, move the decimal place one, two, three places, times 10 to the, well, this is a small number, so it has to be minus three. Okay, embedded zeros are significant. Embedded means they're between two non-zero digits. So this has four sig figs. Um, and trailing zeros could be significant. Only write them if they are significant. Let me take a peek here. All right, so let's do some examples of this rule. Um, so 451.0 grams. So this zero to the right, so zero, to the right of the decimal point, is significant. This number has four sig figs. And that's a trailing zero because it's all the way to the right. A zero on the right is a trailing zero. But now, let's say that uh, somebody tells you that at the last football game, there were 50,000 people in attendance. These are also trailing zeros. And trailing zeros, these trailing zeros with no decimal point Trailing zeros, these are ambiguous. Well, I'll put my units, people. So these trailing zeros are ambiguous. Meaning, ambiguous means has more than one possible meaning. So tr these trailing zeros are ambiguous. Don't use them. If you wanted to convey, for example, that you knew there were 50,000 people approximately and you knew there were not 60,000 and you knew there were not 40,000, you would report it like this. 5.0 times 10 to the uh, Actually, you would report it like this five times 10 to the fourth people. That's one sig fig. And what I just said was, if there's could anywhere between 40 and 60,000 people, 
that means that the uncertainty is in the five digit there, the tens of thousands. And so that is one sig fig. On the other hand, if you stood at the entrance and clicked every single person that came through and you just so happened to hit exactly 50,000, meaning there's uh, a very small chance that there's 49,999, and there's a small chance, because you might have miscounted one, um, and that there's 50,001, you would report it as 5.0000 times 10 to the fourth people. So this has five sig figs and it tells me that the error is in this last digit and that all the other digits are no. That's, that's sig figs and that's the power of scientific notation to convey information about how you count. And it's a tragedy in my opinion, although one of the lesser known tragedies, that all numbers in popular media are not reported in this way. So this has five sig figs. There we go. So these are the rules. And again, we will use the rules on the homework. Sorry, I said some of those. You will use the rules on the homework that says, report your answer to the correct number of significant figures. You'll follow these rules exactly. You'll follow these rules exactly in all of our labs. Otherwise, in lecture, in on exams, three sig figs will always be fine. And in things that are graded by the calculator, using all the calculator digits will be fine. And I'm not thrilled about that, but for an asynchronous class, I think that's okay. We will get our practice for sig figs. And we'll get lots of practice now, actually. It says, for each of the values given below, determine the number of significant figures and convert it to scientific notation. This first number here has both leading, embedded, and trailing zeros. And let's see if we can do this. So, leading, embedded, and trailing zeros. And our trailing zeros are to the left, to the right, sorry, to the right of the decimal point. So that means they are significant. Our embedded zeros are always significant. And our leading zeros are placeholders. which means they are not significant and they will disappear when we put it in scientific notation. So the number of significant figures is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight significant figures. And in scientific notation, well, we'll put the decimal place right next to the three. 3.00780000. And it's a small number. Then we move the decimal place three places times 10 to the minus three. Step by step, we will get practice on this. You will be able to do this, and that's our goal. Next one. Here, we have only leading zeros, which are placeholders and are not significant. So we'll start here, one, two, three, four, five significant figures, and 7.8934 times 10 to the minus two. Now, um, you'll notice that I'm writing all of these digits and it is important not to cut things off that are already written on the page. Okay, so uh, 40,000, we've got three versions of 40,000 here because all of these have trailing zeros. And we want to make sure that we get practice dealing with trailing zeros, all trailing zeros. So here, there, it's just like the example we did on the last page. This is ambiguous. 
and we would not use this uh, interpretation, so impossible to tell. Fair enough. Um, and on the homework, you'll see that sometimes you have to write in the word ambiguous. Um, so this one, I put it in parentheses. It has a dot right here. That's the decimal point. And this is a notation that is used. It's an older notation. I don't encourage it, but it is okay if you use it. That tells me now um, all of these the zeros are significant. decimal point um, says all these trailing zeros are significant. So our answer here is going to be five. Now again, I will accept this as an answer. Uh, I encourage you to put all numbers like this in scientific notation. Um, and I will not uh, personally use the dot symbolism. Uh, it, hopefully I will remove it from my course. If you see it, let me know so I can. Um, but if they're all significant, then the best way to write this is 4.0000 times 10 to the fourth. And this last one even has a couple extra zeros. It has the decimal point. Now these, hmm, I guess I have to restate this. I apologize. So um, no, they're all trailing zeros. Hmm. Um, so let's go with one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, seven significant figures, 4.000000. Times 10 to the fourth. Good. Now let's do significant figures in rounding. And um, we will see that this is also an important part. Uh, so, but it's basically the same rounding rules you're probably familiar with from other classes and from uh, any other uh, math that you've done. Count the number of significant figures starting from the left that should be in your answer. If the next digit is five or larger, round up. If there are trailing zeros in the number, put your answer in scientific notation. Good. So if we take this number here and round it to three sig figs, we're gonna start at the left, one, two, three, so that's gonna be 3.6. And then this seven has a four after it, and that four is smaller than five, so it's just gonna be 3.67 grams. Rounded to four sig figs, it's gonna be 3.67. Well, the last digit is gonna be this place, this four, but since there's a five here, we're gonna round up to five. And then, this we'll see from time to time, a number uh, that we're rounding to three sig figs, so, uh, and we're just gonna put it in scientific notation. One, two, oh. That's not first, sorry, <laughs> got ahead of myself. So if I round this, it's gonna be 47,000. My three here rounds to a 400 kilojoules per mole. And this has trailing zeros. And we want to be clear, not ambiguous. So the final answer should be 4.74 times 10 to the fourth kilojoules per mole, which takes care of those other zeros. It leaves us with our three sig figs that we've been asked for. And kilojoules per mole is a unit that we'll deal with later. I just, I heart units. Let's see, I heart units. And so it's hard for me, though not impossible, to see numbers without units.